just sitting down with a cup of coffee in my Winnipeg mug today. Hopefully we get a couple people there. I am freezing downstairs today, I do not know why. I'm just cold, so I put on a poncho because there's nothing better than wearing a blanket. I hope this camera angle's okay. Mind my hand here. I see a couple people popping in there. If you could please just let me know if you can hear me okay, that would be excellent. Again, I don't have the connector to hook my mic to my phone when I go live yet on my phone. I got one and it didn't work, so pretty color. Oh, hi, Heather. Thank you. Hi, Cindy. Welcome. Thank you, Susan. Okay, good. You guys can hear me okay? Hi, Karen. Oh, I just got to run to the computer. I forgot to grab something, so take a look at all my stuff. Hi, Diana. I'll be right there. I'm back. Hi, Helena. Welcome. Lots of familiar faces. I love that. Hi, Cherries. Oh, I said I'm just freezing. I think it's because... Hi, Dawn. Welcome. Lot. Oh, I love my bag making friends so much. <laughs> you guys make me so happy when I just pop on impromptuly and you're all here. Hi, Marsha. Hi, Becky. Lots of people coming on today. Yeah. So today I was supposed to be cutting out the Astro Bag tutorial and I got sidetracked finishing up my year end. And then I did my hardware orders for the for February so I could get those here because my mail is just taking so long to get here. Hi, Terry. Um, as everybody knows here in British Columbia, the last six months or so have just been, oh my gosh, we've got been on fire with 50 Celsius degree weather. And then once that was sort of under control, then we went into torrential rain, which caused flooding and washing out all of our highways going towards the lower mainland. And then avalanches on the other side. So Kamloops was pretty much stuck. We had nowhere that we could go. Hi, Coco. Got Coco here. Hi, Lena. Well, who is it? Okay, Coco's going to say hi because she's being needy. Coco, say hi. Everybody knows Coco. You probably hear her in all of my tutorials. She's very loud. Okay, no, okay, down you go. Um, yeah, so it is, and you know what? It's really not the postal worker's fault at all. Um, it's just what happens when highways get closed and then they get backlogged and um, yeah, it just happens. So I've been waiting. Um, like I have my Galaxy Customs order here that I was super, super excited to get. Hello, Marlene. Um, I ordered it in her New Year's uh, thing. Hey, Brampton. Hi. Um, yeah, but it, it was held hostage in Richmond, which is like three hours for me um, for, I swear, the last week. Um, so I'm really happy it's here. I have some amazing stuff to show you. And I know that Anna of Galaxy Customs threw in a couple extra things that she is thinking about carrying on her website. And she wanted me to kind of do a little bit of a review of them and to get help from you guys to decide if this is something that would be great for her to carry. So I'm excited to open it. On that note, um, I just want to say, I'm going to be saying this at the beginning of all my lives, whenever I am showing products or tools or what have you, um, on my lives or in my tutorials, I am not affiliated with these companies at all. They do not pay me. They do not send me free stuff. Um, I'm honestly just sharing them because the products that I love, oh, that's alive because she did send me samples of some free stuff because she wants your opinion. So, um, yeah, she sent me a little bit. So, okay, that's a little bit of a lie, but usually there may be like the odd little gift in there. But, uh, seriously, if I'm presenting stuff 
to you guys is because it's stuff that I use and stuff that I truly do love and will back. So I just want to say that I had a few comments about people wondering if I was all paid endorsements or whatever. If I don't like something, I'm not going to show it to you guys. Or if I don't back the company, I'm not going to show it to you guys. So I want you guys to know it's all coming from my heart. It's just stuff I want to share with all of you that I think will make your bag making journey easy like mine took me a long time to learn all of these little things that I learned from other people's. So we just help each other out. So I just wanted to get that out and just to say that, uh, just to clear that up. I know it's only like one or two people that have um, questioned that. Um, so I just wanted to make it very transparent and what you see is what you get. I'm a very open book and I'm very honest and I'm gonna tell you exactly what I think. Good, okay. Too much seriousness, I hate seriousness, so. On that note, before we get started opening this mail, um, as you guys probably have noticed, my last two lives are no longer on the channel. Um, so I want to rethank my coffee subscribers or my coffee donators that I thanked during that one, as well as the ones that all donated to me this past week. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Kirsten, Nicole, Janie, Lauren, Lisa, Marsha, Tracy, Terry, Patty, Helena, and Dawn. See, look, now I'm gonna cry because you guys are just so awesome. You really, really are. Thanks, Karen. Okay, good. I didn't want to sound too, I don't know, something, but it's just something I think I gotta say as uh, I get more and more viewers. Um, again, I'm, I'm one, I'm a people pleaser, as you guys probably, probably can all tell. And when I get negative comments or or accusing comments and I know there's like hardly any like but they always stand out for some reason and it really upsets me so I've been kind of absent the last week or so because I had to like wrap my mind around that and I got to think that I just can't please everybody so um and 99.9 percent .9 of you I know love what I do here and know that I'm completely authentic and know um and know that uh yeah you just know. See, I'm going to get all teary-eyed and emotional and whatever. So if you're just popping in, I'll say it again. Today's Starbucks mug of the day is my Winnipeg mug. As most, I don't know if any of you guys know, I lived a whole three years in Winnipeg from 2008 to 2011. They were the coldest three years of my life, but I made some of my best friends when I lived there. But I was very happy to move back home after three years. Um, so yeah, that... that whole journey of going there. My husband lost his job at 25 years here because they closed the office here. Oh, I love you too, Terry. And so we took a promotion with the company he worked for, which was Pollard Banknote, um, to Winnipeg and moved away from both of our families and moved away from my mom and dad, which is really hard for me and my brother and all my cousins. Oh yeah, Don. It's it's hard. Like people being a people pleaser, you just want to make everybody happy, and I I'm trying to learn that I just can't. Anyway, so Winnipeg, three years. That's where I made my grown up friends. Moving there when I was what thirty, how old was I? Thirty three. Um. Yeah, Kamloops. I'm second generation Kamloopian. Uh, my mom was born here. My dad moved here when he was like three. Um, I swear I'm related to everybody in the city or know everybody in the city. It's a population 90,000, but I just love where I'm from and moving to Winnipeg definitely showed that, but I did love Winnipeg, which is actually where my grandparents were from. So that was fun. Set healthy boundaries. Yes, Marsha, exactly. Um, Actually, I will say after I got some of those negative comments and a little bit of drama that happened last week, and I'm not going to go into details about what happened because it will just get me a little bit upset, but it did um, end up end with me taking those down those two lives. Um, but I know um, Karen drove across Winnipeg. Winnipeg has car broken into. Haven't been back yet. Yeah, Winnipeg can be scary in some parts of those that city. Um, anyways. I know we had such a wonderful discussion about um, how I run my handmade business. There were so many questions, so I really wanted to revisit that. So we have a video of, um, of, of that talk so it can help people with their businesses and whatever. Um, Anita, you might want to get someone to read the comments and filter them for you. Yes, um, I actually have two admins. I know that they're both busy today because I just popped in. These comments that I got, they were actually within emails and stuff that came after. 
Oh, Marshall, you'll handle them. <laughs> and do you know what? They really weren't a big deal. I just take everything um, so personally because I want everybody to be happy with what I do. And my husband's been trying to teach me for the 24 years we've been together that I can't please everybody. I just have to do me and the people that like it do. And those that don't, well, they just, it doesn't matter, right? So I have to stop being a pleaser. I'm always going to be a pleaser. Becky, I've been to London, Ontario. My dad was actually born in Godrich, Ontario. I really want to go visit this spring with him. It's been on our bucket list, so hopefully COVID behaves and we can go. Don, I can moderate if you like brandy. Do you know what, Don? I, I might take you up on that. I don't know how to do it while I'm in the live because my phone is here, but maybe... Um, yeah, maybe, maybe shoot me a message on my Facebook page uh, and maybe I'll get you set up there and you could be one of my moderators on my YouTube channel. That would be awesome. You've been with me for a while now, so I know that uh, you could be a great help that way. All right, so who wants to open some mail? Some pretty, pretty vinyl. I'm super excited. Oh, other news. First, my husband started his new job Monday. Um... What's awesome about that is it's a significant pay increase. It's an amazing job. It's his dream job. He's back to actually doing what he did with Paul or Banknote, which was, was his passion. So he's back to doing what um, he loved to do. He We moved back home to Kamloops. He quit that job and we've moved back here because he knew I wasn't happy there. Like I cannot tell you how amazing Dave is. He's the most selfless man in the world and he really, really, really takes great care of me. Anyways, because this job is so much better, um, he and I sat down. As you guys can see the last week, look at, look, I have a whole cubby empty of my um, custom orders there. So I am actually getting ahead on them a little bit and yeah, so I've kind of halted. I haven't taken any orders for June because I'm booked right till the end of May because I kind of want to see what his paychecks look like. And if that happens, you ready for this? This is super exciting. So currently I do three to four custom bags a week. So I work six to seven days a week, 12 hour days. You all know how long it takes to make a bag. So, and cute too. Who Margie, my, my husband's cute. I think he's a looker. <laughs> Um, anyways, he knows that my passion is in teaching. Um, one of the reasons I got into doing tutorials on here was just before COVID hit, I was actually going to go and teach a class at a sewing conference in the Okanagan here. And I was super excited about that. And it got canceled, of course, due to COVID. So that kind of all went out the window and I was really disappointed. So after having watched Lauren do it and Lauren Mormino, who is actually, um, her channel inspired me to do this. She gave me so much in learning and, and I wanted to be able to do the same thing. Like I, it just super inspired me as did Sarah Lawson, which we've talked about so many times about who I idolize in the bag making world. Um, he suggests that I cut down starting in June to one custom bag a week and concentrating on my channel. Yay! So, um, as you know, YouTube doesn't really give you a huge paycheck. I, as I said, I do get a little bit of monetiz monetization. Um, I, said, I know I said it in my last video, but that video is down. An example of how much money I get in monetization from YouTube is for the month of December, I got $386 or something like that Canadian. So that was for all those that I put on and you know, it takes two to three days to do a tutorial, but it's something I truly love to do. And now my husband has given me the gift that I could do that and I'm super excited. And then I'll sell the bags I make from the tutorials that shows and that kind of thing, but still do a couple customs, but not burning myself out because I am a tired lady. So that's super exciting. So yay, Dave. Thank you. I just have to send that shout out to him because uh, he's the most amazing husband ever. Um, any questions about that before I move on to opening this big box of, I don't even remember what I ordered. <laughs> What's in this box? So. Yes, we got so many people on. This makes me so happy. Margie Dave is so selfless. I don't know how I got so lucky to meet him. Like, it was a fluke. And he gave me two amazing sons and got one son that's his clone. The other son is more like me, but <laughs> my husband, yeah. So, hi, Josanne. 
welcome. Okay, I've been up since 4 a.m. Ah, oh, thanks, Marty. I've been up since 4 a.m. because Dave does work 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, Monday to Thursday, 10-hour days. He's working out of town. And so it's an hour and 20 minutes-ish commute each way. So I have made it a goal to try to get up with him. Actually, I will admit I kind of failed. He got up at four this morning and I didn't get up till five, but I've been kind of working since five. <laughs> um, I was going to cut out the Astro Bag tutorial, but I got stuck on admin stuff instead. So tomorrow will be a long day. And yes, I'm doing the Astro Bag tutorial, which is a customer order. So that one, I'm hoping I can get it done in two days. Um, two and a half days max. So I'm hoping it'll be up by Friday or Saturday. That's for a customer order. So I get to double dip a little bit there. And then right after that, I'm jumping into the Kensley tutorial by So Yours. Um, okay, everybody see, I don't have an admin in right now to delete that, but there's a weird comment in there. Don't click on it. That is a troll. It'll take you to some sort of porn site, I am sure, because people are weird. Um, anyways, the Kensley tutorial. The Aster Bag is blue calamargy. Um, I am now allowed and been granted by Selena Blue Calla to do all of her patterns if I want to. So I already have done the Stone Crop Satchel, which is my second favorite bag by Blue Calla. My first favorite bag is the Aster Bag. So when I actually got an order for the Aster Bag, I'm like, yes, because I can put it all into one um, and I can get that tutorial out soon. Um, it's my utmost favorite bag. Do you want to see what the Aster Bag looks like? I have an Aster bag. It's my um, own personal bag. It was the third bag that I ever made. So it may be a little rough. I'll go grab it. One second. I'll grab it. All right. So I made this bag on my Elna 680 quilting machine three or four years ago I don't remember which I have tons Margie I have tons of Shambhala tutorials to you on my channel it seems that she has Saya Swag doing them now and Saya Swag is an awesome teacher as well but uh from before December she had me doing them so hi David welcome so this is the Aster bag now this one is again this was the third bag I ever made um I still love it. You can tell because I didn't have a business yet. So I used to tag all of my bags. I made myself with the B and there's a B there. Um, it can be made in vinyls. It can be made in cottons. Um, you can see here I have raw edges all along here because there's an overlay. Um, in the tutorial, I will be doing edge coat on those now because I know how to do that. But seriously, this is like my favorite bag in the whole world. And uh, I made it a long time ago on my domestic machine. So I can safely say that this machine is 100% domestic machine friendly. Um, I got stuff in here, it's like treasures. So I didn't even use zipper by the yard yet. I used zipper from Fabricland. So yeah, I carried this bag. Yeah, I just love this style of bag so much. The only thing is on the tutorial, and my customer doesn't want a crossbody strap, so I will be leaving these parts out of the tutorial, but I'll kind of explain in the tutorial what you do. It's pretty self-explanatory, but I'll explain what you do with them, but she does not want the crossbody strap. So yeah, what I like about it is how it folds in on these sides. Isn't that cool? And that is done with a piece of Peltex that's in here. So anyways, we'll get to that in the tutorial, but this is the one I am working on next. And then um, the Kensley, which is another customer order. So that makes me happy. And then getting into February, I've put on my channel newsfeed what my February plan is. So yeah, I have a big week coming up. I've got a dry throat too. So yeah, I'm excited to do that. Um, the customer that's ordered the Aster Bag, this one here is the Aster Bag by Blue Cala Lena, and I'll be doing a tutorial on it hopefully up by this weekend. So my customer, this is her second Aster Bag. Um, she just wanted another one in different colors because her other one she got about two years ago and she's loved it. And now she wants another one. So yay, I get to make one. I haven't made one in a long time. I'm super excited. I think her last one was the last one I made. Okay, see so now I'm like, blah, blah, blah. I got my caffeine high going on. 
So I have an email from Anna from Galaxy Customs to explain something that she's put in this bag. Please ignore Coco. She's apparently protecting our house from people walking on the sidewalk. You know how Coco is. I know I had one person comment, uh, I hear somebody crying in the background. Shouldn't she go and um, check to make sure they're okay? I'm like, oh no, it's just Coco. <laughs> She's fine. Okay. Blue Calla is awesome. Um, Blue Calla is a Canadian designer as well, which makes me very happy to back her. I buy all of my zipper tape and my, um, my, uh, oh, thanks. Karen, you can retract that message for me. Awesome. Um, oh, maybe you retracted your own message. <laughs> Is Coco part German Shepherd? No, she's 100% black and tan coon hound. So if you know anything about hound dogs, they, they're very vocal. Yeah, my dogs like to protect me from that too. Benny, not so much. He's at my feet right now. He's deaf and pretty much blind, but he can sometimes hear Coco bark and, uh, and it gets him going. <laughs> so. Okay. So I see something here. Okay. Ooh. So, uh, wow. So Anna of, um, Galaxy Customs, she is thinking about offering some foam interfacing. Um, let me read what she wrote about this interfacing because she sent me a little write-up because uh, she wanted me to know what to say about them. So let me see. So pink sew foam. This foam is a professional upholstery grade sew foam. If anybody uh, doesn't know already, Anna of Galaxy Custom also upholsters uh, vintage cars, which is super amazing. I can't wrap my mind around how they do, she does that. Um, anyways, uh, upholstery grade sew foam used specifically for quilting applications in automotive and marine seats. It comes to her in 58 inch, 58 inch wide rolls, but it can be cut down to whatever sizing people think they would use, for example, 18 by 29. She has them both in half inch and quarter inch. I have sent Brandy a quarter inch. So that's a quarter inch. Let me grab a piece of my, do I have some sitting up here? Just kind of looking whoop, in my scrap bin to see if I have any foam sitting anywhere. Of course not. Um, okay, I'm totally reaching into my garbage can to get a piece of foam. Okay. Ignore the dog hair on it. So this is Pelon Flex Foam. It looks thicker than foam I purchased from you. Um, that's what I'm going to compare it to. So Pelon Flex Foam. Again, it's got Veronica because I pulled out the gun. Can anyone tell me what the substitute I can use for Pelt Tex Decaval Heavy and Light as suppliers don't stock them in South Africa? Uh, hmm. I don't know about Pelt Tex and Decaval Heavy. Um, Emmeline Bags has a woven interfacing that I find the heavy is similar to Decaville Light. It's just woven. I don't know if that helps at all, David, if you order from Emmeline Bags. <laughs> Anyways, back to this foam. Oh my gosh, Coco. I wonder if school's out. We live just down the street from a high school. Okay. So this is my Pellon foam. This is what I use in all my bags normally. This one is more dense. They are about the same thickness. If you could see that there, does that show that okay? Can you see that they're both about a quarter of an inch? So on one side, it's kind of got this woven and on the other side, it's like this. This is really cool. This is a lot softer and not as, this bounces back more. This is definitely a lot stiffer. Oh, I'm excited to try this. I really wish there was a way that I could let you feel how what I'm feeling. So yeah, anyways, what she says about this foam. Um, it is a regular, uh oh, it's a big word, polyurethane foam with a fabric backing, which is similar to bag making foams, but denser in body. I have never used bag making specific foams and strictly use this foam for all of her designs. She has her own, um, 
designs, bag designs that she uh, sells to her custom clients. I'm really hoping one day she writes patterns because she is awesome. Is it closed? It's closed cell foam. What does that mean? Um, so yeah, this side here looks a lot like what it looks like on these. And then this side, it's more of a foam foam, I guess. But it feels amazing. So I'm actually going to be doing... Oh, I am so sorry about Coco. Um, oh my goodness. Do you know what? She's barking. I bet you my dad, as my dad leaves the airport and he pulls in our driveway to get Coco riled up and barks at her and then he leaves because he loves his grand dog. So I don't know if that's him, but that sounds like a, a, a Coco grandpa bark. So, but yes, yeah, sorry. I am getting distracted by Coco. Um, so yeah, she is thinking about offering this in her shop. Um, I'm actually super excited about it. Uh, I, yeah. Does she say cost? Oh, she does talk about cost here. Cost wise, I have to still look at it, but I believe it will be lower than other bag making foams that are on the market currently. Do not hold me to that until I can do a full assessment. So what she has asked is, if I ask all of you if there would be interest in something like this, if she were to bring in some and sell it on her website for bag making, you'll buy it, Karen. Yeah. So yeah, I'm excited. I want, do you know, I am going to be making, I want to quilt a Conan bowler bag, by country cow designs. I'm going to do a tutorial on that. And I mean, quilting, you kind of need to use a foam to get that quilted effect but I was scared. Um, hi, Mamie. I'm glad you like to hear Coco bark because she does it all the time. Oh, you'll be interested in this too, Helena? Okay, awesome. I'll take note and I will let her know. Um, but I was worried in the Conan bag because the interfacing in it is normally duckable heavy and I was scared it wouldn't have enough stand up. Um, Dawn, I think she has pretty decent shipping. Um, in the description below, I have put a link to her website and, um, and uh, she should have her shipping stuff in there. It's not fusible, Lena. I actually don't use fusible foams myself just because when you turn them, they sometimes, um, they sometimes wrinkle. I'm interested is the U S Canada. I was tending to my pup. Sorry, Marlene. She is out of Ontario. She's in Port Birdwell, Ontario, but she does ship to Canada and the U S um yeah but she is canadian um she has amazing vinyls which we'll get to in this box but yes excited to get into the box so yeah this is uh i'm excited to try it i think that this this has a lot more stand up ability um so i think i am going to use this in that coating because i think it's going to give it enough structure i'm making it out of vinyl but I just didn't think that it would give that, because it's a little bowler bag, that my Pelon foam would do the job. But I think this one might. And I've been talking to her about that and trying to decide what to do. And again, this is what she quilts car seats with. It's always fun to try. That's that's the only way to find it. And it's pink. Like, I mean, really, I love pink. <laughs> so, okay. So, yeah, I will tell her that there, and Jeanette, you would buy it too? Okay, I tell her that there is some interest. Maybe I will suggest to her to do a trial run of some. Again, she will cut it to whatever size that you want, um, and she'll have to uh, figure out cost. Keep in mind, she does have a full-time day job as well as her vinyl company. She is just a machine of a company. She and I have become quite close um, the last couple months when we met and her product is just amazing. Anita, you would buy it too? The only thing I might recommend on a domestic machine, my industrial won't have any problems with this, but if you're going to use the sew info and I recommend it for, it's pink so you're in awesome Dawn. Um, and I recommend it for all my phones that if you're not cutting it out of the seam allowances because it's fuse, It's not fusible, right? If you take a zigzag or even a serger, when you're attaching it to your, your panels, it compresses this quite a bit. So it's not as bulky in the seam allowances. That's what I used to do um, with my Juki 2010Q and my Elna because I used to always use the foam. And when I basted it to my panels, I always made sure I zigzagged it on and it would just squish it down. 
and then you wouldn't have much problems. So, all right. So that's a yay. What else we got in here? Okay. This is another thing and I'm going to compare it. Um, she wants to carry, I bought these from her, by the way. Um, I heard that she was getting them and I wanted to try them. So she's thinking about carrying double-sided tape. Oh, it is almost the same. So this double-sided tape, um, I'll read what she says. Um, okay, so she is thinking about selling double-sided tape. This tape is a professional upholstery grade tape and has an equivalent tackiness to the Waywack double-sided tape. Waywack and Cleaner Supply are the same company. I have the Cleaner Supply tape here. I'm going to compare the two for you guys. Um, she believes, again, don't hold her to it. She's got to figure out her costs. You would buy this too, Karen. Um, it would be a lower cost per wool than Waywack. She's wait, blah, blah, blah. Waywack. She's thinking almost 15% less. So that's huge because the stuff is not cheap. So let me just grab. So yeah, again, I get my tape at Cleaner Supply. It is, okay, these are the same size. Um, Cleaner Supply is the Canadian version of Waywack. So this is Cleaner Supply. Again, I don't store mine very well, so it always has thread stick in. And this is the one that she can get in. The see tagginess, okay, that's Cleaner Supply. Where's the end of this one? I can tell that they feel almost, oh yeah. Um, try to decide which one feels tackier. They're actually pretty equivalent to each other. Yeah, so if she could get this cheaper for all of us, that would be great. So she can get this in quarter inch and half inch rolls. And if you're interested, she can bundle them in half inch and quarter inch packs or multiple rolls of the, the same size. So let's see what she sent me. So there's the half inch, and there's the quarter inch. This stuff is like water in my sewing world. I cannot live without it. So when she said that she was gonna order some to try it, I asked her if I could uh, get in on that order with her. So um, yeah, so I am set for tape for a little while. So is this something I should tell her she should try a trial run on her website with too? Yes, yes. It's kind of nice we can get a bunch of things all at the same place so and again canadian supplier but she does ship to the u.s i believe she ships internationally don't quote me on that because i don't always know <laughs> yes okay she's actually quite close to you karen so i mean you're you're in the maritimes and she's in ontario all right so that's all the stuff that she sent just to get your guys' opinions. And I think we've done that. So I will relay everything to her. Oh, let's see if she says anything else. Did I read it all? Yes, I read it all. I asked her to write it out. So, cause you can see, I get a little flustered and then I don't know what I'm doing. All right, who wants to see some vinyl? I don't even remember what I ordered. Uh, did anybody order from Galaxy Customs New Year's Eve sale? Mimi, eighth inch double sided tape. Okay, I will mention that to her and see if that's a possibility that she can get in as well. Yeah. Um, I use mainly quarter inch and three sixteenths of an inch. Um, Margie wants to see vinyl now, and I've like totally sidetracked again. Um, I do have eighth inch, but I don't use it as often, but I could see it would be really good for like number three zips and that kind of thing. The half inch is gonna be nice for doing um, straps. I would love if somebody would carry nice color a thread. Helena, what kind of sewing machine do you have? What kind of thread are you looking for? Text 45, text 70, text 90? Because Cleaner Supply and Waywack carry, oh, I never don't know how to say it. 316th is good too. Um, I'm an AM, a-N-N -N or A-M-A-A-N or whatever. Hi, Christine. Welcome from California. Um, and it is the thread that I'm, uh, is my go-to now. Um, I was using, and I get it at Cleaner Supply. It is the best. I swear I will not use any other kinds and it comes in some really good colors here in Canada too. I have the same machine as you. You have a 1541, Helena? 
Really? Or do you have the cylinder arm 1341? Ooh. I was getting a telemarketer call there. Is it? Um, yeah. Uh, so if I paused, it's because I got a phone call and I just hung up on them. Thank you, Don. A-M-A-N-N. -N. Um, I strongly recommend it. It comes in text 45, text 70, I think all the way up to 125. So, um, yeah. It's awesome. They have great colors. Um, I'm looking at them now, but they're way over there. So I did do a mail opening on some of my Amon or Amon uh, threads and it's in one of my it's in one of my lives I don't know which one Helena is it the Titan or did you get a Juki just curious speaking of machines my Juki 1541 my husband got the new bobbin assembly in yay we thought we had the timing down but it's still slightly out he knows how to fix it I just have to wait for his days off and then I think I'm gonna I found here in Kamloops which is amazing somebody that services industrial machines um oh awesome helena uh so i might be sending my 1541 because she hasn't ever been serviced except for by me karen you're selling your juki your 2010q or your industrial juki um yeah so i think i'm going to send it in for servicing i don't know how long it'll be there but i do have my 1341 so i'm just going to keep plugging around oh helena titan you're my titan sister that's awesome i love my titan so Tiffany is almost back in commission. Dave got her 99.9% .9 all better, which is amazing. But now that I have found an actual person that uh, can service them here, I am super excited. <gasps> Karen, why are you selling your industrial? Are you getting another industrial? Are you getting a Titan industrial? Mm -hmm. Are you getting a cylinder arm like my 1341? That would be a good choice. <laughs> I love having both. I am missing my, my flatbed a lot, mainly because I'm short and it sits so tall. Um, I want the best of both worlds. You can do everything on my cylinder arm that you can do on the flatbed. You can actually do more. Oh, awesome. Talk to Rodney at Central Sewing. Tell him I sent you. I think I've told you to do that before. Um, yes, if anybody uh, wants a Titan 1541, um, I am set up on an ambassador program because I 100%, 100% back the Titan machines. Hi, Elaine from Saskatoon. Oh, a Saskatchewan lady. Welcome. Um, so yeah i'm super excited um so if you tell him i sent you i think he'll give you a free gift i hope i'm tall i ordered the recent relic insert okay good you won't have an issue i'm only five foot two so yeah my back starts hurting after a while yes marcia i love i i'm gonna love having both once i actually get them both working at the same time it'll be fantastic so okay i'm actually going to move my coffee so i don't spill it on anything getting cold anyways all right let's get to the nitty-gritty so we are opening from galaxy customs i'm gonna put you guys down so you can see what i'm looking at here all right here we go my nice and beat up table okay so i've showed this one before this is the pearl obsidian black I have classic handbag being made with these. This is amazing. The pearls are like my favorite of her vinyls right now. They're just fantastic. I'm trying to look at, uh, watch comments at the same time here. So if you see my head kind of weird, that's why. So yeah, it's kind of like a charcoal -y gray color. And yeah, it's just super pretty, super fine. If you saw my classic handbag tutorial, I did it in the sky blue of these. It's just, a super amazing vinyl they're my favorite i want it in all colors i've shown these colors before because i've ordered them multiple times but uh, i have clients ordering in them so this is the lagoon teal of the pearl vinyls hi becky from illinois welcome i'm happy to say that my camera is showing this color pretty darn true you're working with these at the moment, Helena? That's awesome. Isn't it amazing to work with? Completely domestic machine friendly. Um, I did do a live checking or testing these on my her vinyls on my Juki 2010Q. And I believe, don't quote me, 
because I don't really remember. But I believe for these ones, I got to five layers before it started skipping stitches. If I changed my needles and maybe used something more than a Gooderman thread, it may have gone even more. Um, so yeah, for these ones, I think it was five with a crappy needle and crappy thread. And for the Canuck finals, I got six. Do they need to be interfaced? Um, I guess it depends on your bag. It's quite, it's quite stiff and structured. Um, it depends, it depends what you want of the bag. I quilted with this. So I did back it with foam to get that quilting look with it. But, um, yeah, you, you probably don't have to. It's, Excellent. Janome M7, how can I buy supplies from you? Now can I buy supplies from you? Elaine, I don't sell supplies. I'm I'm a bag maker just like you. And But Galaxy Customs is selling a bunch of interfacing and vinyls, and I strongly recommend them. Her information is in the description below. Um, so yeah, I guess it just depends on how structured you want the bag to be. Um, she has on her website all of the thicknesses. Um, I want to say this one was 0.8 millimeters, but I'm not sure. I would not. It makes it too stiff. Yes. If you are interfacing, definitely keep it out of the seam allowances, especially if you're on a domestic machine. So, but it is awesome. I've made all my classic handbags with this. She will be getting more in S. Prajit. She will. I'm sorry. I probably bought all of her stock. I'm feeding the addiction. Well, Karen, I can't be here alone um i have i have so much of this have you ever ordered from atelier fiber arts marcia i have manda um manda's little business is great i get all my matte black hardware from her um so i get all my hardware from emmeline bags i get all my zippers from blue Calla, and my matte black hardware i'm currently buying at atelier fiber arts so okay again my camera when i look as you could probably see me looking at it um I have a brand new iPhone that I got for Christmas and it's showing the color really true to how I see it. So this makes me very happy that you can see like this one is just, it's just gorgeous. So, so yeah, I got two of those. It is one millimeter. Okay. Thank you, Don. <clears throat> okay. Ooh, okay. And this one is the vintage pearl crimson red. This is the one I'm actually debating doing the Conan bowler bag and quilting it with this one. I love red. I like anything orange, red, fall colors. That's really pretty too. Oh la la, hey. You did not buy the teal, you need it now. The lagoon teal, yes, yes, you do need this in your life. I won't tell you how many rolls of this I have here. Um, I order them as soon as I get a customer order. Um, I already used up my stash of it. Your purse is red. Yes. So pretty. I just, I make Anna laugh because I like to hug her vinyls, but they're just, they're just so gorgeous. Okay. What do I got here? Okay. These are the same. I've shown this one before. Hi, Tammy. Welcome. And this is the amethyst purple of the pearl line. So I said, I am absolutely obsessed with the pearl line. I still have on my wish list for my stash. I want to get in the pumpkin pie. I want to get in the gold. Um, yeah, I eventually want to have a roll of each in my stash. So they're here for when I do tutorials, when I decide. Coco saying hi, everybody. Margie, isn't it? They're all purple. And they kind of have like this little bit of a sheen, shine, shimmer to them. I just, they're almost very 1950s. This is your birthstone, Karen? Awesome. I got another one there. What else did I get? I got more. <laughs> I spent a lot of money. Purple is your favorite color. Awesome. Oh, I'm sorry. I got more teal. <laughs> I think I have like four bags I have to make in this teal. So I bought lots. These only come in 12 inch rolls. The, um, the pearl vinyls are only 12 inch rolls. I love the shimmer. It makes bags look even more expensive. I agree. Pumpkin pie is out of stock right now. I know. That's why I have to get it. She is getting more in, she says. Uh, she's just waiting for her supplier to get more in. And then she's got to go ahead and cut it all. Um, she's a one-woman show over there. She does an amazing job and also works a daytime job. I don't know how she manages it. 
I adore her. She's a really, really great person. Um, <laughs> all right. So I'll be checking her site. Yes, Margie, definitely check her site. It's amazing. Um, okay. So now we're looking at 18 inch rolls of her Canuck line. 14th here about you. Oh, 14. I don't know what the temperature is in Kamloops. So I just know I'm cold. So of the Canuck finals, this is the hummingbird. Isn't that pretty? I'm actually thinking about making a moon wake with this out of, with rainbow hardware. How do you find sewing with her glitter vinyl? Dawn, I have not tried her glitter vinyl yet. Believe it or not, I have another order coming that I just placed a few days ago and I have some glitter vinyl in there that I managed to snag. I think I snagged the pinup pink and the um, pinup pink and the Wedding Chapel White or something, if it those names. So I grabbed a couple to try. I have a feeling I'm gonna love them. But yes, she is going to be sending me some swatches and she's going to end up having swatches for purchase on her website. So I'm looking forward to being able to purchase that and then I can show you all of the colors because I definitely can't afford to bring in every single roll of her colors. I just bring them in as I can, so. But yeah, I'm thinking about for um for my website for selling not for customer orders but doing this hummingbird color with rainbow hardware i got a rainbow moon weight kit from atelier fiber arts um which is amazing because i think that's the only place in canada where you can actually buy a rainbow uh, moon weight kit so you think that'll look good together i was thinking i actually have the moon weight kit here let me grab it get a look everybody see Titus there in the corner he's feeling much better since his vet visit two weeks ago he's all better now doing much better the Canuck line can you see it's it kind of reminds me of um the Dakota marine vial vinyl I buy from uh Fabricville it's similar to that and it's got like I don't know if you can see can you oh there you go you see it has a little bit of texture but not very much kind of has a leathery look okay so this is the rainbow moonweight kit that i purchased from atelier fiber arts before christmas and this is oh yeah i think that is going to look awesome together what do you think i know my light's kind of glaring on there only two likes. Come on, everybody, click the thumbs up. Yeah, thumbs up, woo. Oh, good, Anita. I'm glad you find this informative. Just ask if there's anything you wanna know because I'm just kind of trying to figure it all out as we go, so. So yeah, that's my plan with that. And that's for my own stash. Coco's saying hi again. She's beside herself, I don't know why. Okay, so I got two of those. Give me a little pile. Okay, so I am going to be doing first or second week. Actually, I guess the first week of February is next week already. Second week of February, because I'm still waiting for um, some webbing to come from Lucala for this one. I'm doing the tutorial on the large size of the John Duffel bag by uh Oak Creations. Green is my favorite color, Anita, too. Emerald green is my absolute favorite color. Um, and it's actually a duffel bag. It's gonna be a tutorial and I'm actually making it for my son, my eldest son, Riley, who is a healthcare aide. I made him a Dallas duffel when he graduated two and a half years ago and he carries it every single day to and from work. And it's starting to look really tired. And I told him it's really time to retire that bag because it's my brand and it's just, it's well loved. So he has chosen his own fabrics this time. So it should be interesting. But he chose this color. This is the Canuck line again. And it's the ketchup chip red. So this is his choice. <laughs> ketchup chip red. Antique brass hardware. And chocolate brown webbing. He is using inspiration. He He's very artistic. He paints those little Warhammer game, whatever. I call them little Warhammer dolls. He gets mad when I say that because they are not dolls. But uh, 
he paints these little teeny tiny things and one of his favorite armies that is the colors of it so that's what he's using for inspiration so when i do that tutorial i told him he had to give me one of those little guys that he's painted so i can show where the color inspiration is coming from so this will be turning into a john duffel which it is quite the combo isn't it um well he's got an eye for color so maybe it'll look amazing i don't know <laughs> we'll find out but we'll all see it come together for sure. And then on top of it, the lining he chose, let me grab it here. <laughs> oh. He chose dice. <laughs> so yeah, he's a, he's a 22 year old man child, meaning he's my man child. So, so it's all, um, gaming, um, themed. He likes playing Warhammer. So dice is for, I guess it's important in Warhammer. And then the colors of his favorite army. So that's what we're going with. The first one, I chose all the colors. It was red. Red is his favorite color. But uh, yeah, I think I thought it was kind of fun to plan a bag with my kids. So so I've got two of those for that duffel bag and for that tutorial. And then, ooh, okay. It is his bag. Um, Terry, I love the combo. I had brown and red shoes as a teen. I miss them. So it might be good. Um, it's, it said it's it's not a color combination I would usually um, choose, but that's one thing about doing custom and trying to fill, even if it's my son's custom, um, you learn different color combinations that your own mind might not even think would look good, and then they surprise you, and they are. <laughs> your pup is talking to mine. Well, Coco's talkative today. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. My grandson picks his own materials too, and he's a doctor. Aw, doctor, nice. Yeah, so it's a lot of fun. Okay, so this one is just for my stash. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. I knew she was out for a while. So this is her solid vinyl line. This is the Robin's egg. Can you see it's a very, very pale blue? It is textured. But yeah, the, my camera is showing it pretty true to what I see here. Very true. So it's a very nice, pretty, soft, pale blue. Maybe I want to do my... Oh, no. Now I don't know. Isn't it pretty? Do I want to make the Conan Bowler... Do you guys all know what the Conan Bowler bag is by Country Cow Designs? I know. Go and grab it. It. I think she's got some on her website. I think she said that it was... I know. Oh, my God. I'm getting a whole bunch of... Oh, I love that. Oh, my gosh. Um, I think she just restocked this too. Um, if not, she'll be getting more in. So this is the Robin's Egg Solid Vinyl. It is, it's even softer than Baby Blue, Margie. I just made a brown and black bag and it looks great, but not my choice. Anita, I'm making a brown and black bag like in a couple weeks too. Love the Robin's Egg. Yeah, it is, it is Baby Blue, but it's lighter than Baby Blue. And the texture is really nice. I should do the red. Okay, so am I doing the Conan? I lost it all. I have a big pile. Do I want to do the Conan in the baby blue or the red? The red? Go bold or go home? Maybe I'll make it in both. <laughs> I'm actually using this red. I am doing a tutorial for Lauren Mormino as well. I am doing her Valora bag. And I'm going to use this red vinyl for it. It'll be a different bag. Um, I have this, it's called, I'll show you guys. Let me grab it. You should see this, look at this pile here. Look at, <laughs> I have to hide this before Dave gets home. <laughs> and we won't tell him that I just filled another box. So Anna ended up having to go and buy, oh, Coco, bigger shipping boxes because my orders are big. Make two, because <laughs> I got time for that. I'll have to try. Okay, so tell me what you think of this. It's very different. Let me grab it here. Sorry, Benny, I didn't mean to run you over. I'll explain my organization system here. I know a lot of you were on that live that's no longer up where I explained my organizational process, but we're gonna do it again today. So Lauren, Marmino, so whatever, said, that I could do her tutorials for whichever bag that I like, whatever bags I like. So I decided I want to do her Valora bag, this one. I am going to do the large one, 
the large size because I, I really want to use this print of fabric. So this is what I'm going to use. It's going to have nickel hardware. I already got in here. And I'm thinking for clientele, I think this is really going to sell well around my Halloween shows. So I'm using this vinyl. And then I have, I think I actually have the salvages on this one, which would be amazing. I don't think you can buy this anymore. Okay, it is an Alexander Henry fabric. You'll either love this or you're going to think I'm absolutely crazy. I want to use this fabric. Specifically, this girl. Yeah, get the pattern done. I'm going to be doing that tutorial uh, first weekend of February. Anyways. You're either going to love this fabric or you're not going to like it. Hey, Caitlin, you love it? So I'm all about 1950s pinup type girls. These are pinup zombies, don't you? Um, Alexander Henry, I've had this in my stash, I swear, for over a year and a half. I had no idea what to do with it. So for her pattern, oh my gosh, Coco. So for her pattern, I read through it. So there's this front panel here. This is where I am going to put my pinup zombie. Hi, Lynn from Liverpool, England. Ooh, that's where my favorite band, The Beatles, is from. Ooh, I'm going to go there one day. So this front panel, when I compared it to the fabric, my favorite girl, this one, and this is why I'm choosing the red, like seriously. This will be the... The vinyl is going to be these side pop-out things here. And then the fabric's going to be here. And then on the bottom, I'll have vinyl as well. But look how perfect. This is really hard to show. Look how perfect these go together. And I've just been, I can't, don't know how to show this. <laughs> so I think that's going to be a really, really fun bag. But look how perfect. Matches her dress perfect. I think it's going to be great. So I'm super excited to do it. And she's got red hair like me, so. I like her. <laughs> well, Kaylin, I know I said this fabric isn't for everybody. Hi, Melissa. There's my admin, Melissa, everybody. Thank her for everything she does for me. She is amazing. The bag will be amazing. I think it'll be a really good seller in my area. Oh, Melissa, you're driving. Yes, please be safe. <laughs> Don't text and drive, but you can listen to my video. That's fine. Yes, yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. Oh, and then the lining. I've had this in my stash for a while as well. So I think it's going to be really fun. Um, yeah, I'm thinking for my October show, I want to have a few Halloween themed bags. And I think that that might be a really good seller. And I, I said, I just love this one. I just think she's so pretty. So hopefully zombies doesn't offend anybody. It's not meant to offend anybody. I just think, I just love Henry Alexander fabric. And I think that, uh, I just think she's gorgeous, even though she's a zombie and has a brain hamburger here. But <laughs> I think it's going to be fun. And I think it's really going to match this bag. So as I was saying, this front panel here, um, that's where my zombie is going to be. And she actually fits right in between we got some uh, strap connectors here, so it fits in well there. And then the rest of the bag I'm gonna do in that red vinyl. The back of this bag has a slip pocket and stuff. I don't wanna be fussy cutting and, and cutting up uh, this fabric. It was rather expensive fabric and it's out of print now, so I'll save it for other things. It is green, <laughs> it's kind of an olive green. So yeah, the only cloth part will be this front panel and it's gonna showcase her with the brain hamburger. And then I got these kind of rockabilly cherry skulls that'll be the lining. I think it'll be really, really pretty. Um, and I think it'll, it'll bring a lot of attention to my table at the Halloween fair. So that's what I'm going for. Do you think my thinking is right? Do you think that'll be okay? I think so. I'm just excited to actually use it. So that's my plan for that one. Yeah, what else? And that, so, hi, Coco. No, who wants to say hi to Coco? She's going to come up and say hi. Okay, Coco, look at the camera. Look at the camera. Look at the camera. <laughs> Do you know what? She wants to eat soon. 
Go talk to Brady. Brady will give you food. Okay, go on. Go upstairs and see Brady. Go see Brady. She's like right here. Okay, go on. Go upstairs. Go see Brady. Go get Brady. Go get him. He'll feed you. Go on, Coco. Go upstairs. Go upstairs. There she goes. <laughs> She's noisy today. I don't know what's up with her. More vocal than normal. I think it's because our schedules are a little bit with off with Dave's new work schedule and everything. So she doesn't get to see him in the morning. So uh, she uh, is out of sorts. Okay. So do you guys want to talk about bag making, custom bag making businesses again? Do you have questions? Many people love zombies. My daughter does. Yeah, and Coco. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Coco is a sweetheart, but she is loud. But I do love her. She's my baby. For sure. Oh, no. Here's a reminder. Snack. Alexa's reminding me that it's snack time. Here's a reminder. Snack. Here's a reminder. Oh my gosh. Come on, Snack. Alexa. We're just waiting for her to stop. Okay, Alexa, cancel. So when I'm working, I get in the zone and I will forget to have my snack. I will forget to have um, my lunch. So that reminds me, did you start out with making custom bags or did you make bags first to sell at craft shows? My first craft show was this past November. I had never done craft fairs with my bag making before. I honestly did not have time because I used to work a full-time job. I lost my full-time admin job twice, got laid off twice, um, due to COVID. So bag making was just my hobby. Um, and I did custom orders for friends and family everywhere. Oh, you like my mug? Sorry, I'm answering comments as well. So if I'm all over the place, just get me back on track. My Winnipeg mug, my second home. Um, preferred in the summer. <laughs> um, so when I lost, got laid off the second time, how did I do at my craft markets? I did pretty good. I'll come to that in a second. So my husband said, why don't you make a go at doing custom bags? Okay, Margie, we'll catch you next time. And yeah, I've I'll have two tutorials coming up very, very quickly here this weekend for sure. Um, so I, uh, losing my train of thought. He says, take a break. Don't stress. Make a go at your bag making because I had so many people always requesting, I was getting more and more known, um, but I could only take so much because I was working 40 hours a week at an admin job. So quit and I ended up taking on. And for currently I am booked three to four custom bags a week. That's not including my tutorials, unless I have a tutorial and an order that match up together, which is always like my dream for that to happen. Um, yeah, so I booked three to four custom bags a week until the end of May. Mind you, I did take two weeks off in May for vacation because I haven't taken a vacation since I started doing all this. And I've been doing this since a year ago last December. So yeah, Terry says thumbs up everybody. Give me a thumbs up. Um, so yeah, I officially went full time a year ago, December. So I lost my job the second time in November and then December decided to go full time. Do you use text 45 thread? And if so, do you buy it in Canada? Erica, I use text 70 thread because I have an industrial machine. I use almond thread from cleaner supply and they do have it in text 45. Um, text 45 is awesome in domestic machines. So if you got like a Juki 2010Q or an HD nine or what have you, um, you can get it from there and they have lots of colors. So that's where I get mine. Um, if you're in the States, I think you can get it from like Sunny Sewing. Lauren Marmino use it as, uses it as well. And I think in one of her videos, she says where she gets hers down in the United States. So um, you might want to check that out. Anyway, so I've been official full time for just over a year and it's been a crazy year. So for my craft shows, what ended up being on my table were my tutorial bags. Because I started making my tutorials about the same time. Um, incredible. Thanks for sharing. I've had similar experience with losing 27 year job due to COVID. Oh my goodness. I'd only been at my job for a couple of years, so it wasn't that traumatizing. And I honestly wasn't very happy there. So I think it was a blessing in disguise in some ways. Um, but yeah, 
uh, yeah, COVID's been hard, but at the same time, you have to find a silver lining in anything. I wouldn't be doing this without it. Can you use Text 45 in the top bobbin with a Juki 2010Q? Kim, I don't know the answer to that because I've actually never used Text 45. I've been using my industrial for so long and I use just Guterman thread, which isn't the best choice of thread for bag making. Um, is there anybody in this live that can answer that question? Um, Text 45 and a Juki 2010Q? I'm thinking yes. I'm thinking you can. I think I have heard people do it, but I don't want to be accountable if you can't. <laughs> but I know a lot of people use Text 45 in their domestic machines. So I've seen in the bag making community on Facebook. So if anybody can chime in and answer Kim's question for me, that would be great. Um, okay, what was I saying? I don't remember. Um, oh, bag making. So I started my tutorials. Um, when I got laid off the first time, not trying to be nosy, but do you feel like you can make a living making your bags? I'm retiring soon and trying to decide if I should give selling my bags a chance. Lori, um, I'm not the primary income in my household. Um, my husband is, of course. Um, but I can tell you, um, I make, this year I made just slightly less than I did working full-time admin. Mind you, I, I didn't make an incredibly great wage. It was above minimum wage. I used Text 40 on my Juki 2010Q. So there you go, Marie, You can, uh, Kim, you can. Yes, Melissa says, yes, 45 thread in the top, but not the bobbin. So there you go. Um, I can, I have never used Text 45. I have vintage machines anyhow, can't use it yet. I don't have a trunk Juki 2010, but in my domestic, I can use Text 45 on top thread, but regular all-purpose thread in bobbin. There we go. Thank you everybody for answering the question. I didn't know. Um, Semi-retirement, absolutely. You could probably make enough money. Um, I couldn't pay my mortgage with it, but as the supplementary income in the house, it gave us plenty of spending money to be able to do what we do. I will honestly say I just ended up buying more machines with it. So <laughs> um, this year, uh, yes, I did okay. And I can honestly say I ended up putting um, a lot of my money back in to build my stash, as you can see from my big, big pile of vinyl that I bought here. Um, and I did buy since I started doing this, I did buy both of my industrial machines. One is paid off, the other one is not yet. Kaylin, I've been sewing for markets in Florida since last spring, not making much. Oh, Kaylin, um, I am fortunate because there aren't that many bag makers in Kamloops. Um, there are some, I know of two others for sure, but they both work full-time jobs. I imagine I would buy an industrial and lots more vinyl too. Yes, Lori. <laughs> um, but the other bag makers in my city here, we all have such different styles that I think we complement each other well and we're all good friends. So um, my craft fairs, um, how did I do? I only did three. Um, so I took my tutorial bags. So I did, would you believe 53 tutorials? I think there was 53 tutorials I did throughout the last 14 to 16 months, which blows my mind. A good chunk of those, bags i would post on my facebook page and on my website and they would sell most of them sold locally um right away now the ones that didn't sell those are the ones that i took to my uh to my fairs um i think i took i made a couple extras that weren't tutorial bags just because i wanted to fill my table more i think i started with 25 bags um, for the three fairs and a bunch of wallets. I almost sold out of all my wallets. They were all the cork wallets, like the Triscoll wallets and the tall wallets, all the sonar patterns. Um, yeah, everybody ignore the troll. Um, Melissa, my admin, is driving home from work, so she cannot delete that right now. I am going to be adding in Dawn as an admin as well for here, but I can't do it today. So please ignore the trolls. I will go in and delete those comments later. I unfortunately can't do it while my camera is running. So, um, Yes. So in the end, do you lower your prices at market? I do not lower the prices at the market. I keep them at my regular prices. So then I did like a 12 days of Christmas 
clear out auction. I don't know if anybody follows my Facebook page that's for my clients. I got two Facebook pages. They're connected together. I have my main business page, which is for my clients. And then there's like a backdoor one. If you go into groups, and you look for beans, bags, or beans, bags, bag maker group or whatever. I'll put a link down below to that group if you're not part of it already. And that is for my bag maker community. Um, so those 12 bags that I didn't sell, um, oh. I ended up having this clear out auction because at this point all I wanted to do was get I didn't really care about the time I put into them I just wanted to get my supply costs back so I had a 12 days of bag Christmas auction so each day I've created a Facebook event and each day I featured one bag from those 12 bags that I had left and I put my starting bid at what it cost me to make the bag so say it cost me $90 to make the bag I've made my starting bid $90 or my starting bid $90 and then I'm getting all of my money back out of it and I'm clearing room because as you can see I do not have very much space so I'm happy to say um that um unless I think there was two one was at the very very beginning every single one of my bags sold so, and most of them for over that, people got screaming deals. Um, I do my prices by, um, usually I will do my supply cost times three. I try to keep my bags under $250. So if there was a $90 bag, that one would be like a $240 bag or a $250 bag. I do not charge for my time. I just do the times three and then I adjust because I know in Kamloops I can sell a bag for $150 to $250. These are Canadian funds, not American funds. So I don't know. Was that like $125 to $175 American I would think would be the equivalent? Don't quote me on that, but I'm, I'm just kind of thinking of what those numbers were. But my yes use it if you need to clear out bags and they don't clear at your fairs mind you our craft fairs here they weren't very busy this year um we have a um big time uh covid restriction in british columbia so only a certain number of people could come and go and a lot of people are really not comfortable going out school is out now so now you're going to hear coco barking and all the kids walking um but yeah it was just really good to get them out and it really benefited me in the end because I had some followers. How do you track inventory? Do you break down each material for pricing? I'll get right back to that, Kim. If I if I forget, pop it up here again. Um, so for the auction, I had all but two bags went local. One went to Vancouver. One went to the Okanagan. All the rest were in Kalamazoo. Um, so I had one lady that ended up buying four of them like she was just crazy she was just outbidding people it was great I loved her um and she when I dropped off her bag she said to me I have been following you for the last year and I've been wanting to order your bag but they are at a higher price point which they are we have to charge what we're worth um make sure we're, we're making enough for a wage for ourselves she goes but I had no way of seeing what I was buying. She goes, and because I could buy these bags, hi, Sonia, I could see the quality of your bag and I love each and every one of them. And all four of these are going to be presents for my family. And then she played, she contacted me through Facebook Messenger that evening and she placed an order for her own bag. So I got a custom order out of that. She gave the other four bags to family and three of those four people contacted me for custom orders so even though I gave those bags um I let them go for pretty much what the, my cost was to make them I ended up making more because I got four custom orders out of it which was just whew, blew my mind so um I think that's something I'm going to do annually if I start doing more and more tutorials I might decide to have one about halfway through the year as I start running out of room because I do not have a lot of storage space um most of my income is I do custom so I make them as they are ordered but doing tutorials I end up being having bags and again half of them will sell right away when I post them but others don't but then that gives me my um my uh inventory for my tables so yes yeah, so I did those three fairs one of them was a really large one I did very 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 well at that I think I sold 
six bags at that one and a ton of wallets. So you got to think your price point. Um, so again, my bags range anywhere from 150 to 250, depending on materials used and again, my cost. And would you believe I made a whole bunch of men's wallets and just the sonar patterns, the cork wallets, and I sold a ton of them to men. They were the biggest sellers was the men's wallets. Um, I was surprised. Do you give your client limited choices or do you ask what color they're looking for? Okay, I am going to, oh, Kim had a question. Kim, what was your question again? I'll answer that before I get in there. Um, get into my whole process. Would love to know how you do an auction on Facebook. Okay, I'll talk about that too. Kim asked a question. I want to answer that first before I tell you my process that I work with my customers. Um, is Kim still there? I think it was Kim that asked the question. Three months out from Christmas, I don't offer to take gift orders and paying per month till pickup. Kim, how do you track inventory? Okay, are you talking inventory of ready med bags? Or I don't know why it keeps coming up message retracted there. I will have to go in and see what's going on. Track inventory. Are you talking of my hardware and all of my product or you're talking of my made bags? Because I will tell you right now, I do not keep inventory of my hardware. I usually supplies mainly. Okay. I don't really keep inventory of that. I'm always filling my stash when I find things with sales. Um, and with my hardware, I usually order my hardware as planned. So I, um, I like today I did my MLine order. So for my next two weeks worth of custom orders and um, my tutorials, I ordered all the hardware that I need to do those. So again, I don't have much for storage here. I have a filing cabinet, a huge doctor's filing cabinet full of fabric, but I don't inventory my fabric. I don't inventory my vinyl. Um, they just go into my uh, inventory program as cost of goods sold all is one big chunk. And that's because I'm not selling say rolls of vinyl or hardware or anything. I'm selling ready-made handbags or custom-made handbags. So I usually only order in the amount that I need for the time, unless it's this vinyl that I just keep ordering because I want it all. Um, to inventory my bags, I have a website. So I actually have to catch it up. But when I have a bag that I've done in a tutorial, I put it on my website and my website keeps track of the inventory of those bags. So when it sells, it pulls out. And my, um, my accounting program and my website are linked. I use Zoho Books and Zoho Commerce. And so if I sell, it comes out of there. Okay, thank you. That is. Did I answer that question? Um, I don't know if my way is the right way. I just know it works for me. So I inventory the bags that I have here that are already made. Um, and those come up as my inventory, but I don't inventory my actual whatever. Um, yeah, okay. So you guys, do you want me to pretend that you are a customer? And I'll tell you how I go about doing my custom orders with them. Is that what you want to see? Is that what you want to hear? I'm thinking, yes. So when a customer contacts me and says, I want to order a custom bag. Now, one thing I am strict on is probably my worst nightmare that happens is somebody says, this is my favorite bag. Can you um, copy it? I'm like, sure can't because <laughs> I'm not a pattern writer. I don't want to take apart their favorite bag to try to figure it out. That's going to be way, 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 way too much time for me to do. So what I say to them is on my Facebook business page, I have uh, my photo section, each album I have set up with each kind of bag that I can make and that I offer. And it has their, the price of the bag. Um, do you get more sales from the shows or from the website? Marie, I get 95% of my sales from custom orders. I don't get that much from the shows or from the website. It's my business is all about the custom orders. So when I go to just doing YouTube stuff, I'm not going to be making very much money anymore because <laughs> YouTube doesn't pay me enough. 
it doesn't pay hardly anything with the monetization. So, um, yeah. Um, but that's okay. Cause I want to do what I love. Um, again, I'm not the primary income of my family. My husband is, I did make close to the same as I did working a full time and mid job, but I am working like six, seven days a week, 12 hour days. It's they're long days. Um, but I love what I do and I'm blessed that I can do it. Okay. So I will send them to my albums on my Facebook business page and get them to go through there. Or I will send them to my meet the bags videos. I'm, I'm probably thinking you guys all know about my meet the bags, uh, playlist that I have on here. Um, that is actually the meet the bags I created for my clientele because you can see a bag in a picture, but the colors are never quite the same. And like, it's always a little bit different. And I don't like to take pictures of, but with things against my body. Um, so I find with those video tours, um, that gives the client the visual of the bag, the size, um, everything it has to offer and that kind of thing. So those little one minute, two minute videos are very, very helpful for me. So usually, in the description of my albums of each bag, I've got the size, I have the price, I have my video tour in there. You guys are all welcome if you sell bags. Say you had somebody that wanted to buy a Rudinasia bag, but they're like, well, can I see what it looks like in person? Um, you have not seen my Meet the Bags um, playlist? You'll have to search it out on here. It's on my channel, it's under my playlist. Um, but yeah, you can use that. If somebody wants to see a Rudinasia bag, you can say check out this video send them to my video i get more views and they get a visual of it which is going to help you sell the bag too so feel free to use my meet the bags videos just copy the link and send them to them saying this is the bag if this is the one you want i have lots of meet the bags videos um yes so usually they'll go through the albums they'll choose that they'll look at the meat i'll make sure always make sure that they watch the video so they understand the size of the bag um and usually it's good and then from that point, we talk about what they want. Do they want to have an all vinyl bag? Do they want to have a cotton exterior? What, what do they want? You're very welcome, Laura. Um, so say now we're talking vinyls. So now it's time to choose vinyls. So you like this five minutes, but you always refer the bag as she, I do, don't I? <laughs> um, so I have, um, I have permission from Emmeline. She has those little pictures on Emmeline Bag's website because the only vinyls I offer is stock vinyls are any of the Emmeline Bag's vinyls and any of the Galaxy Customs, Customs vinyl. I used to only offer the Emmeline Bag's vinyls, um, but now that we have Galaxy Customs as well, which has even more colors, I was just overjoyed that um, we had that resource in Canada because we don't have that many resources in Canada and shipping from the US is just way too high. So I was over the moon, as you can see, I've been stocking up. So I would send them pictures of the colors they can choose from and then they kind of decide. Um, if they decide they want fabric or when it comes to choosing the lining, um, nine times out of 10, my clients choose cotton lining because they want a print. They don't want a waterproof canvas solid color. They want a print. I have made a couple with waterproof canvas, but my clientele seems to like a print for the uh, lining. So when the lining comes up, I, I will say, well, what were you looking for? Say they were saying, I'm looking for a floral that would match good. I will actually go into my stash and pull out any floors, florals that I think look good with that vinyl. And I will take a picture of that for them. Say, do you like any of these? And a lot of the time I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that one. And I'm like, great. Cause I already have that one here and it's coming out of my stash. If they don't like any of them, I send them to dressso.com. I only send them to, to Canadian places except for one website. Um, Dresso.com, Dinky Doo, and Funky Monkey, and Troll Brothers Quilting. Those are my four go-to Canadian fabric shops. Um, but if they're looking for something really specific, bye Kaylin, have fun. Hi Jaded. I send them to Spoonflower because you can find everything under the moon in Spoonflower. And I can tell you probably seven out of 10 times they're ordering Spoonflower. Marsha. I do work in my jammies all the time and my hair is usually in a messy bun and I'm not wearing makeup. I will not lie. <laughs> that is usually me. I actually had to get like, try to make myself look 
uh, presentable today because I was going, I knew I'd be going live today. So that's how they choose that. So once they've chosen that, once they've chosen their print, whether it's from my own stash or if they've chosen it from a website, then I send them a picture. I have, I've taken a, a tri-glide or a slider of each of the colors I offer of hardware and I put them on a white mat and I took a picture of that. So I send them that picture and I say, okay, now which hardware would you like to pair with this? Hi, Michelle. Oh, thanks, Michelle. <laughs> I wish I could say it was all natural. Um, but uh, yeah, and then they choose their hardware. So now we have done their vinyl, we have done their, well, we've chosen their bag, their vinyl, their lining, and their hardware. And then at that point, I tell them when the completion date is. So now if you are ordering from me right now, I say I'm currently booking for the first week of June. Your completion date will be the first week of June. I never give them a specific date of that first week because you can always be ahead or behind a day. So it's always, I know my cutoff is always the Sunday of that week. So I said, currently I'm doing three bags a week that I have to have done by that Sunday. Um, and then I do tutorials on top of that. So I'm just crazy busy. So that's what I do there. And then they send me a 50% deposit that is non-refundable and that cups is so I can order in everything that I need um, for that. Mainly the fabrics. I may not order the hardware until the time comes. Um, you're welcome, David. I hope this is helpful. Um, so as we know with fabric and vinyls, they sell out so fast and with fabric, they go out of print so fast. So when they've chosen a fabric, you wanna make sure you can get it. Um, right now I am taking shipping into account huge because I may get something tomorrow that I ordered yesterday, or it may take three weeks. Um, I ordered this Galaxy Customs thing on New Year's and I just got it now. And that, I mean, that wasn't Galaxy Customs fault. That was Canada Post. So how did you know what I was going to ask next? Oh, <laughs> I'm in tune with you. You just answer my next question. Awesome, Kim. So yes, always, 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 always take 50% non-refundable deposit. And the majority of the time that covers the fabrics that you are buying. Um, may not cover all of this. Well, maybe, maybe not, maybe, maybe not. Um, 50% all the time, because if that person bolts, you have something for the money that you've already put out because you are going to have to buy those fabrics before they go out of stock. You want to have them there now for hardware. Again, I usually order my hardware two weeks or three weeks. Um, in advance because I don't have the storage to store four months worth of orders of hardware here. So again, I do my hardware orders. I have a very, very good relationship with Jan Janelle and Emmeline Beggs. I spend a lot of money there. Um, so um, yeah, we do that. And same with the vinyl. Um, yeah, so I, I will order my vinyls right away and I'll order my fabrics right away. And I will use that 50% deposit to do that. And then when the bag is complete, I will message them. I say, your bag is complete. If they're in Kamloops, I will say, you have a choice. You can have a socially distance because I only do social distance pickups right now just because of the situation in the world right now um, where you let me know 20 minutes before you're gonna get here and I will put it out in um, the collection box at the front of my house and then they can pick it up from there and they e-transfer me the rest of their deposit or the other 50% that they owe me. Now I have over the last year, 75% of my clientele are repeat customers. I have one client. She is my top client. Her name is Julie. She lives in the Okanagan. I think she has bought, I've been making bags for 20 or 22 years, two to three years, three years. I think now three years. I don't remember. She's been buying my bags since the very beginning. I think she has almost 22 of my bags. Like she, she got rid of her coach collection and she says she only buys brandy bags. I've never met her before, um, but she's an amazing person. I really do have to meet her one day. So um, once the word gets out there and you end up having the clientele that knows your quality, and I find with custom bag making, people really like being able to have that one of a kind bag that they have designed themselves. I will tell you now, I have made many ugly bags at the same time, <laughs> but my clients love them and they're beautiful just because they're not my style doesn't mean it's not theirs. So 
when they get it and then they message you and um, how do you deal with repair problems with customers bag? Megan, um, I have actually, knock on wood, never had a bag return. Oh, Melissa, so go back about the text 45 thread in the Juki. I have the equivalent machine. My sister has the Juki. I can use the 45 in the top bottom and I can't read the rest. It went away. Um, okay, so they have, I, the only way I take returns on a custom bag is within the first 60 days or so. Um, and it's only if it's malfunctioned in some way. I have never had one, knock on wood, never ever had one. I do offer a service, um, cause the thing that wears out on bags I find the most is the straps, especially when they're vinyl straps and they start getting that cracking and that, and that um, shredding that sometimes happens. Um, so all my clients know that I include one strap repair, um, one strap repair and it has to be like within 18 months of buying the bag for me to repair it um that is why if you notice in my tutorials i usually will modify a bag to have uh straps connected with rectangular rings um so the reason i do that is if it was attached to the bag i couldn't cut the straps off to repair them but if i have them separate and attached with like by rivets with um the rectangular rings i can cut off those handles and easily make other ones and reattach them without having to compromise the rest of the bag i am so sorry about coco <laughs> then she's got benny going now too so i've done two strap repairs um ever and they were on uh bags that my clients had carried every single day for 12 months to 18 months or whatever um the majority of the time when a bag wears out my clients are ordering a new bag because they love their bag so much uh, melissa top and bobbin and, and see how your machine does if you're going to use it in the top okay so melissa is talking in the comments there about text 45 melissa is my admin so if you want to know what text 45 thread let's have a peek there so yeah, that's what I do. Um, again, I have never had uh, a bag returned. Um, knock on wood, hopefully it doesn't happen. So. And like I said, I have such a great clientele um, within British Columbia here. Um, I do have a couple clients in Alberta, but honestly, most are in British Columbia and most are in my hometown. Brady, can you feed them please? Okay, thank you. Um, now to uh, i know i had the question how i got my name out there so when i first started doing this full time a year ago what i did was i made most of my aunts as many of my cousins all of my best friends my mother my grandmother my dad has a wallet my brother has a wallet my sons have wallet my sons have bags I made bags for all of these people in exchange. Oh, you're very, very welcome, Melissa. Um, in exchange that when people ask them about their bag, they have a handful of my business cards. She'll only bark for a few more minutes. Brady is feeding them right now. And um, you can use a, ma a matching lobster claw on a new strap and mail the strap. There you go, that works too. Um, yeah, it's feeding time. It must be three o'clock now. <laughs> um, yeah, and then if somebody asks about their bag, they say, this was made for me. It was custom made for me. Um, like my aunt, uh, I did custom, I actually made her a Monica bag. What does she have? A Monica bag, a Macy bag, and a Brony or something. Um, but yeah, I let them, them decide what they wanted to use for colors, whatever. But I made them choose fabrics out of my stash. I wasn't ordering fabrics if I was giving away this bag. But they were my marketing. And it really, really helped get the word out. And then once you start getting those clientele, they tell their friends. And then they tell their friends. And then more and more people come. And it just blew up from there. So yeah. So once I get those orders in, that's where these bins come in. Is I keep them in order. And in each bin, let me grab this one. So this is the Astro bag I'm going to be doing. 
So these are the client colors that they have chosen. So she chose this one for the exterior, this one for the lining, and then she's using a cherry red vinyl. And then she chose antique brass hardware. Do I have her thing in here? Let me grab it, I put it up here. Oops. So in my counting program, they make these packing slips and I don't know if you can see here, I'm trying not to show her name. So it says the Aster Bag One um, Fabrics from Catch's Quilt Shop, which is a local qu quilt shop here. She actually went to the quilt shop and chose up the fabrics. And I have a really good relationship with the th uh, three quilt shops we have here. So I just say, tell them to put it behind the counter and then I will go and purchase it the next time on, on that side of town. Um, so yeah, so this has all the description I need. Fabric from Catch's, um, no crossbody strap, antique brass hardware, you choose the vinyl. So she's letting me choose the vinyl and I have chosen a red color that's this color here. So I think it's gonna tie it all in together. Um, I love it when they let me choose stuff. So, so that's what I do. And then I put all of the hardware into these little things and I put everything I need for it into these bins. And then I stack them in order that I have to do them. And then I have a, a day planner that has when all the due dates are, as well as I have an erasable calendar on my fridge around the corner that has a month's worth of bag making to do. So that's how I keep myself organized and how I keep going. Uh, Terry, my dog is looking for Coco, walking around the house trying to figure out where the barking is coming from. She'll be quiet now because she's filling her stomach. So. Yeah, so that's pretty much how I run it. Um, I have flat rate shipping, so um, I charge in Canada. It usually costs me anywhere from $17 to $25 to ship a bag, depending where it's going. So I charge $20 shipping. Bye, Lori. We'll see you next one. Um, so I, uh, yeah, so anywhere across Canada, I cannot sell to the U.S., um, Unfortunately, that's because of my business insurance. Um, oh, my business insurance would go from like $200 to a year to like $4,000 a year if I shipped outside of the country. So I'm not prepared for that uh, just yet. So I'm just seeing a notification. My Emmeline order just shipped. That was really fast. I just placed that order before coming into this live. So yay. Um, yeah, so, but again, most of my clientele are is in Kamloops. Um, so I do a weekly drop off on Fridays and then, um, or if they want it before the Friday, again, we can do a socially distance uh, pickup where they just come and pick it up from my house. So yeah, that's a huge bump. That's a huge bump. Oh, for the, uh, for the shipping, it all depends. Like if it's going to Vancouver, it's gonna cost me $17, but if it's going to Nova Scotia, it's gonna cost me 25. So that's for like one bag. That's Canada Post for you. That's how much it is to ship in Canada. It's unbelievable. It's by weight and size. So the heavier, luckily bags are not heavy. Oh, insurance. I know. I was like, oh. So the way my insurance worked, I could have went full-fledged business insurance, but because I don't actually have people coming into my home, I am not a store. I do, I'm just in my basement. Um, in the spare room and in the laundry room hallway here doing my thing. So my insurance offered business insurance, which would cover all of my machines, all of my fabrics and all of my materials that I have here. Um, if the house were to burn or say I would be on, um, on my way to a craft market and I would get in a car accident and all of my stock would be destroyed, that would all be covered by that insurance. And it's just an add-on onto my home insurance. So yeah, it, it it ended up being $200 more a year only on my home insurance, which was amazing. But if I went full-fledged insurance where I could ship internationally and what have you, it would bump up to like three to four thousand dollars. Helena, I sold my first bag last week. I put it on Facebook and it sold in five minutes. Don't you love it when that happens? It's so rewarding. It truly is. I I feel like I haven't sold a bag in so long. I honestly haven't been. Usually, I will have a day of marketing where I will go on Facebook and say I have. You've probably seen it. Um, five spots left for for May or whatever. 
First come, first serve. Who wants it? Or I'll put on a little sale. Get friends and family 10% discount today if you order today. And then I'll fill my month up like that. Usually when I do that, I fill my month up right away. Um, but because I'm not sure where I want to, what I want to be doing in June just yet, I am not pushing my custom orders. So, um, okay, there's another troll there, guys. Please ignore it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I just lost my train of thought. It's gone again. Oh, talking about insurance. So, yeah, no, I just, this, this works for me. Um, I keep getting notifications. Now my, my uh, order from Bucala just, just shipped. Yes, you cried. It's awesome. Congratulations, Helena. What kind of bag was it? And I hope you charged your worth. I just almost spit my coffee all over the place. <laughs> it's iced coffee now. It's nice and cold. So yeah, are there any other questions as to how I do it? I don't know if my way is the right way. Um, I just know it works for me. So I just wanted to share how I do it. I said, and if you can get a business number like I have, then um, what if they end up not liking what they selected for fabrics and hardware? Marcia, that's their fault. I tell them you are choosing the, uh, the fabrics and the hardware. So... Yeah, it's non-refundable for your choices. That's why it's only if the bag is defective. Now, if I get a fabric in that they've chosen and I don't think that their hardware is going to look good with it, I will sometimes message them and I'll put their fabric down and I say, okay, this is the hardware you chose with this fabric. But what's calling to me is, and I just want to share with you in case you decided you wanted it, is maybe this gunmetal would look even better. And they'd be like, oh yeah, oh yeah. And then they'll change it, so... If you think it doesn't quite look good together for hardware wise, do not refund the uh, the fabric that you've purchased for them. But hardware, if you have it already, the colors, then do it. It's working so it's the right way, exactly. It is working. And I don't believe I might be taking the risk of taking on less custom. It gives me a little bit of anxiety because I do have quite a steady income coming in from this, but I really wanna be able to do more tutorials. Ooh, I want to try the Maggie 55 Ruby Satchel. I hope I have time one day. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, my plan for June, hopefully, once I see what my husband's paychecks are going to be like, but I think they're going to be substantially great. You have been so helpful. I just got my website and do craft markets, so it's been slow. Kim, if you ever, ever need advice or just want my point of view or or what worked for me, feel free to message me on Facebook or shoot me an email. I'll put my email and everything down in the description below after this live. I always include my email in all my videos in the description. So always feel free to reach out. I like to help. I have many people email me. I start my day off answering emails of people who have questions and stuff about bag making and everything. And it's actually the, the highlight of my day. I really love doing that. How do you handle someone that tries to negotiate price? I don't negotiate price. I just made a Vexen matching wallet for my sister-in-law. I wasn't keen on her fabric, but it's her bag. Exactly. It's her bag. I said, I've made some, some ugly bags that I thought were ugly, but they thought were beautiful. Well, like it. I made two so far. So far. Excellent. Yeah. So thank you so much. You're awesome. You're welcome. I've asked questions. I have learned all of this on my own. If I had somebody I could have asked, it would have made my life a lot easier. So pick my brain. Whenever the pandemic is over, will you do a live workshops in Kamloops? I want to. I really want to do conferences. Um, I know that I was talking, I won't say who I was talking to because I don't know if I'm allowed to, but um, someone in the bag makers community who does patterns um, was talking about doing a, kind of like what the State Sew Expo is, but up here in Canada, in Calgary, um, this spring. Um, I don't know if I'd be ready for it this spring yet. I, it all depends on, on the pandemic and what's going on. I can't risk getting sick. I have a very asthmatic child, or he's not a child, he is 20, but my son is a severe asthmatic, so he, we can't get COVID. It, it, could, it could be really bad for him, so we are really careful. But I would love to be able to teach at some of those conferences and do a class. That would be my goal. And I know that there's sometimes one out in Ontario. I would love to do that. Um, I know my two admins, oh, Teresa, I'd love to meet you too. My two admins, Rhonda and Melissa. Melissa lives in Connecticut in the U.S. And Rhonda lives three hours from me in Abbotsford. And then I've 
become very good friends with Anna from Galaxy Customs. We just clicked. We are just so much the same person. We're very in tune with each other. But all of us want to eventually go to the Florida Sew Expo. Um, I don't think it'll be the one this fall. It's just too soon. And it's really hard to travel outside of the country right now with all of the restrictions. But we're hoping for 2023. And I would like to go and hang out and meet all of the people that like I'd love to meet Lauren and 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 Jess Oakla Roots and anybody that was there um yeah and then even to see all of you if you were there and and to meet everybody in person it would be really cool so but yeah I love to teach I said I originally started this because I was asked to teach what is that bag on your desk and what did you use in the top this one here this is the Astro bag I am doing a tutorial on this tomorrow <laughs> this has I don't remember. I think it's Peltex. I might use, um, actually, I don't even know if there's Peltex in there. I don't remember. I have to relook at it. I haven't made this bag in a good two years. So, but I am doing a tutorial on this. Look how rough this is. This is back before I knew what end caps were. How do you do Facebook auction? Okay, Don. Um, the only thing I found with my Facebook auction, it was my first one this year was the algorithm of Facebook is just dumb right now. My brother actually works for Facebook, so I should talk to him. He just got a job there. <laughs> Not his fault. Um, so what I did was in my business page, my business Facebook page, I created an event and I made it an open event so anybody could join and I sent out invites to everybody and made a big announcement on my pay, on my Facebook page and I went live on my Facebook page explaining what the auction was. Um, so yeah, I just created an event and then I set out the rules. Um, I don't even know if you can go in and see it anymore. So I said that I would be posting one bag a day. The auction would run from 8, 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time to 8 a.m. the next day Pacific Standard Time. So what bag do you personally carry? Yes, it is. I will tell you that in a minute, Blythe. <laughs> Let me, if I forget, tell me. Um... I'm sorry, I'm reading comments and then I lose my train of thought. So what I did was every day I posted one bag. Actually, first I did a group photo of all the bags that would be up for option. Um, and so everybody had an idea what the bags were and created excitement and all that. Um, and then I post one bag at 8 a.m. Laura, if I forget about that question, ask me again in a couple minutes. I'm just gonna try to finish my train of thought here. Um, so I post the first bag of the day, starting bids, such and such, video tour here, such and such, and I would put the description of the bag all in the description of that picture that I post. And then my people in it would bid in the comment section. Um, so say my starting bid was $75. So the first person would put $75 and then I found everybody did $76, $77, $78. And then there would be like nothing. And then like 30 seconds before it was over, somebody would go $100 <laughs> and they would steal the, the auction that way. So then I would make sure at exactly 8 a.m. I would turn off commenting to that picture. And then I would announce who the winner was and I would contact them and let them know they want it and arrange for the e-transfer and delivery or mail or whatever. Now for the auctions, I did not charge um, PST because I have to charge PST on my, actually I have to start charging PST this year. I didn't have to last year. I didn't, I had, I, I made enough in 2021 that I have to start charging PST for this one. So that shows that I'm doing okay. Oh my gosh, Coco is beside herself. So then I would contact them. They would e-transfer me. And if, and I also covered shipping if they were outside of Kamloops just to keep things simple. And then the next one would go up at 8 a.m. The same, like one would end and the other one would go up right away. You can schedule that in your events. So you can go in and pre-put everything in and you can schedule when you want things to post. So you don't have to be there posting at all. You just have to make sure you're there to turn off the commenting and decide who the winner is. So. And it, it worked really well for me. The only thing is that I had traffic, but not everybody was like, I had 220 people that were attending the event, but they weren't seeing all my posts, which was frustrating because I think the auctions would have done a lot better if they had gotten the notifications. But if they didn't go in 
to something on Facebook, the notifications and hit all or something like that. Um, there's something you have to do when you go into an event so you can see all of the posts. So I'll have to remember that for next year and then maybe do a video to let everybody know what they have to do in order for that to work out for them. So they'll see all the posts. Otherwise they have to remember to keep going in and checking. So that's the only part that didn't really go well, but it was, it was a great idea. And do you know what? Like, okay, if you think I probably got a hundred, to $120 for each of those bags. Yeah, I would have sold them for 175 up to whatever, up to 200 maybe. And, um, but I got all of my supply costs back plus a little more. Doesn't matter how old they are. They are always our babies and you don't look old enough to have a 20 year old. He's actually my baby. I have a 22 year old too. <laughs> I had them when I was 24 and 25. My boys are 18 months apart. So I got married when I was 22 and been married for, yeah, since 1998. So we've been married for 24 years this April 11th. So it's coming up and I'll be 47 on May 1st. So it's my husband's 50th in March. Big 5-0, he'll always be older than me. <laughs> He's my superhero though, so. Um, okay, bag I carry right now. I have been carrying for a year and I made it out of three ounce leather and it is a Rudinasia bag. It's starting to look a little bit worn. I love it. I actually went to switch out. I made myself also a mint classic handbag and I loved that, but I just moved back into my old root Asia bag because I missed her. I don't change my bags a lot. I get comfortable with the bag and I stay in it. Um, I am thinking about making myself, I have a lovely green leather that, uh, that I bought and oh, it's a lavender and twine bag too. I forget what it's called. I want to say it's like the Alula bag or something. I'm terrible with names, but um, yeah, it's kind of got really nice top stitching and it's got like nice angles and everything. It's similar kind of in shape to the Rudinasia, I guess. Now I feel old. My son is 21. He was my 41st birthday present. We have back to the, back to back days. Oh, wow. I couldn't imagine having a baby now, but I had them young. A lot of my friends have young kids right now, but I'm done. Both my kids still live at home. One's in university and the other one works full time as a care aide. But uh, um, yeah, uh, my eldest, he uh, pays me room and board, but he's also saving for a mortgage for a house. So I'd much rather him be here. His room and board doesn't even really cover his, uh, his that's for his, his, he lives in our rec room. So we moved him down to the rec room so he'd have more space and that includes his food that includes his cell phone it includes everything so um, he gets a really good deal but uh, i'm just proud that he's saving he just bought himself a brand new ford bronco as well so and he saved 50 percent of that and then has everything else on loan i carry him a mexa one for each season i mean to carry more but i don't know that root in asia before that root in asia i was actually carrying a macy bag and before that i was carrying this one so a bag for each year that I've been I've been sewing bags I guess so it is time to make another one but I just don't have time right now and I I did take time to make myself a classic handbag and I will probably switch to that one for special occasions because um, it is super pretty and it gets so much attention when I have it out um, but I just know how to live out of my Rudinasia bag really well and I missed it so I went back to it <laughs> and it's black so it matches everything there was another question. Who else asked me a question? I know that was one, what was the bag I carry, but there was another question. I don't remember. I get the sometime or sometimes and I don't remember. I have to learn to bring a pen and paper so I can write it down. Anyone? Was it Kim? I don't remember who it was. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Any other questions? PST, provincial, provincial sales tax. Um, we have two taxes here, um, provincial sales tax and goods and service tax. Every province in Canada has the goods and service tax, but you have to make like, I don't know, a certain dollar before you have to charge that. I don't have to charge a goods and sales services tax yet. A provincial sales tax is a little bit less and I did make 
um, almost that this year. So I did have to um, apply for a PST number. So I'll as of January, I am going to charge a PST, which is 7%. That's a provincial sales tax in BC. Not all provinces have a provincial tax, um, but BC does. She asked you, what is your most popular bag? My most popular bag. It comes in waves, really. Um, the Trailblazer um, by Vegstock. I have made so many of those. I actually just made three and sent them off today. Um, the Rudinasia bag is super popular. The Classic Handbag. Oh my gosh. Um, since I posted that and I said I have one purple one left for sale that I made extra from my... Um, permit craft fairs I did not include that in the auction because I actually made that I made four of them in December because I thought that they would sell oh you still have HST Teresa yeah we don't have the HST anymore they went back to GST and PST um so my March and April is full of classic handbags and classic zip around wallets like I'm making those two paired I think for four or five orders in a row and that's actually why I've ordered all these because everybody's ordered them in the same style of vinyl just different colors so um yeah that's coming up and that is like my hot seller right now is that um this time last year it was the Moonwake bag I sold a ton of Moonwake bags a ton of Rudinasia bags. Uh, lavender and twine is always very, very popular. Trailblazers are always very proper, proper, uh, popular. Um, I've sold quite a few Magdalena circle bags. with, the, And now I have people ordering them with the flat bottom. That's the hack that um, I did a tutorial on. Because I... It was actually my mom came up with it. Because I made her a circle bag. The first circle bag I ever made. And... She says, and it's her favorite bag. And she's like, the only thing is, and she's worn it out, but she goes, I wish that it wouldn't flop over because it's round. So when you put it on a table, it's going to flop because it's a circle, right? She goes, if this had a flat bottom, that would be absolutely amazing. I'm like, I think I can figure out how to do that. And I did. I made it for her. And she goes, this is perfect. Put her seat on it. It has a flat bottom and it's super cute. And that's when I asked Alexis of Aura Rosa if it was okay if I did a tutorial of a modification with a flat bottom and she said, go for it. So that's why I have two Magdalena circle bags. I always say my kids are now older than I am. <sighs> my babies are still my babies. <laughs> yeah. Who sells classic handbag? Anita, that is by Sewn Ideas. I do have a tutorial on that one. It is, mm, I don't have any here. I have the pattern here. Do you want to see? I'll show you what it looks like. I have the powder now because I'm going to be making a ton of them. This is the classic handbag and it's by Sewn Ideas. Hi, Doriette. Welcome. Wow. From Newark, New Jersey. New Jersey. Again, everybody that's joining in, Coco is very, very, very vocal today and I apologize. She's, she is not dealing well with the change of my husband's new work schedule. She has doesn't get to see him in the morning, so she's just beside herself. I carry whatever is my latest make. Wow. So yeah, that's it. Any other questions? I'm here. We've already been here for like an hour and six, no, more than that. Almost two hours. Holy moly. Wow. 117 minutes. The most popular bag. Yeah, I said it changes. The classic handbag is my most popular for March and April. Um... This time last year, again, it was the Moonwake, but right now it's a classic handbag with the classic zip around wallet. Pairing them together. I always upsell wallets. I give $10 off of a wallet if they buy a matching wallet to go uh, with a handbag because then I can just use the scraps from the handbag to make the wallet and still make another $60 or $70. So yeah, that's another thing I do. Any other questions? Concerns? Advice? Suggestions? I'm always open for suggestions. As the comments go quiet. <laughs> yes, I don't really know what else I have to say. I think we've talked about everything. Um, mm -hmm. Who saw The classic handbag is by sewn ideas it's an amazing bag it truly is 
I'm glad, Kim. That's what I wanted to be. I said we had this conversation before and it went over really well. So I want to actually do it. Keep doing what I'm doing. I will. I love what I'm doing. And I love the YouTube end of it. I said that's 100% where my goal, my passion is right now. Um, yeah, I really love the YouTube side of it. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I do have some money growing in my coffee account. Thank you again for all the people I listed earlier who donated to my coffee account. I will put that link down below. It's not mandatory, but if anybody wants to donate to it, I am currently saving for new lighting for my tutorials. Everything is expensive, you know. You've been amazing. Oh, thank you. But again, coffee. My coffee account is only because I had subscribers ask how they could send me presents, and I didn't really or send me payment for my videos. And I'm just like, do you know what? You can donate to things that can help. I'm going to make a coffee. Bye. Bye, Helena. Um, just helps me. Uh, the coffee account so far has helped me buy the microphone, which is awesome. You're afraid to YouTube. Do you know what, Kim? I'm super nervous right now. I'm just really good at hiding it. <laughs> you will never ever. No, I will never say never. Um, I don't do live solo longs. Um, that's just not my thing. Um, you're welcome, Helena. I like to do my tutorials in a way that it looks like a uh, a class. Coffee, please place it in your details. S. Project. I will put that down below. Um, it's just if somebody wants to donate a coffee and then it just goes towards buying stuff to make my tutorials better. We should absolutely share the pictures of our pups. Um, what was I saying? Oh my gosh, I lost my train of thought again. Um, I don't know, it's gone. I'll rewatch this later and I'll be like, oh, Brandy. I get I get squirrel moments. <laughs> um, what else, what else, what else? So yeah, Aster Bank. Oh, I know. I like my tutorials to look more like classes. I find when I could do the voiceover when I'm making, like afterwards, I find I don't get as tongue-tied or stutter as much or whatever, because I actually am quite nervous, believe it or not, when I do this. So when I do the voiceover, I find that I can explain what I've done. Um, can explain what I, I'm doing better rather than as I'm doing it. Plus I have the microphone and it's just so much clearer. And I, I know you can still hear the dogs in the background a little bit, but it's better than when I'm sitting here and she's as loud as she is there. So when I can go in my room and close my door, that kind of mutes the noise of my house. My house can be chaotic. Two dogs, two cats, two grown children and my husband here. It's just, and I always have, um, the kids have uh, friends come and go here and there too. So maybe not so much lately, but in normal times, absolutely. So yeah. Oh, and then sometimes my parents stop by and they'll just drop things off and that kind of thing. So it's just crazy. So yeah, um, I, I know Lauren and Kasaya do live so longs more. Their so longs and their tutorials are amazing. I watch them every day myself. I will not lie. I love watching other YouTubers. Um, but uh, you will probably very rarely see me do a live so. You're welcome, Anita. So yeah, so this weekend, watch for the Aster Bag. I'll be doing that tomorrow. I've made the class hag made in yellow faux ostrich leather and it's so pretty. Oh, David, I'd love to see it. That sounds gorgeous. I love yellow. So, um, yeah, so the Aster bag tomorrow. Hi, Rhonda. There's my other admin guy. Say hi to her and thank her for everything she does. Rhonda and Melissa are always there for me and uh, they help me through the hurdles of when I get bad comments to keep me, comment, <laughs> keep me picked up and everything and let me know that it's like one out of like 7,000 people. We're at 6,559 subscribers now. You laugh every time Coco barks. That's good. She's hilarious. <laughs> she's never going to change. She's 10 years old and we've never been able to break her of that. But now she's she's quiet. Like she's either super loud or super quiet. So yes. So again, thank you everybody who donated to my coffee account that got me my microphone. Again, $200 that was donated there, I put towards the microphone and I took $100 out of my own pocket and bought myself a $300 microphone. And I think I've used it for my tutorials this month and I think the sound is just so much better. I think it was better than the little $15 lapel mics that I was using. So 
super happy for that. And then with the last batch of money, I did buy a couple more lights. I want another light for in this room. Uh, and they're just like uh, filming lights. I don't have any lighting going on right now. So you see like a lot of shadow and all that. So I am in the basement. It's very dark and I just want to be able to make everything as bright as I possibly can so I can help you guys learn how to do some of these patterns. So again, this is our channel. This isn't my channel. It's our channel and I want to make it the best I can for all of us. And if you guys ever have any requests, let me know. Have a great evening. Thanks again for everything. Okay, S. Prajit, have a great day. Thanks for tuning in. Well, I almost think it's time to call it a day myself. This has been a great chat. Again, we've been on here. I think this is the longest live ever. What is the easiest make and the most difficult? I can tell you my most difficult make, Marsha, the bag that I have made many of them, but it's not my favorite. I'm getting new year and look forward to the Astro tutorial. Thanks, Terry. Um, the Clover Convertible Backpack by Blue Cala. I love the bag, but I can tell you I have a hard time with the train case part. I'm not going to lie. Um, that bag's my kryptonite. That's the hardest bag I find that I have ever made. Kasaya on Saya Swag has a tutorial on that. Maybe I should go watch it. Maybe I'll learn something. But uh, she did a great tutorial on that. I did watch the very beginning of it. Um, but that is my hardest bag. Easiest bag would probably be... Um, the second bag ever made, which was the hobo bag by So Sweetness. It's a really fun and quick sew and really great for a beginner. But any bag is doable, even if it's intermediate, just take your time and go slow. And always know that I'm here. If you need a hand, just shoot me a message on Facebook, shoot me an email, and I'm more than willing to help you if you have any stumbles, if I can. Yes. Any other questions before we call it? as I have a super cold coffee now because I've just been talking so much. Again, thank you, everybody. Thanks for the chat. Hope to catch you next time. Yes, Lynn, thank you. So I will let Anna... Oh, there's Coco again. Anna of Galaxy Custom know that, yes, people are interested in the foam, and yes, people are interested in the double-sided tape. Um, her glitter vinyls, I believe, are up on our website. Check them out. I can't wait to get mine. Awesome live. Enjoy your evening. Thanks, Don. Um, I will go. I saw that you messaged me. I will go and uh, respond to that here shortly. Jaded, this was fun as usual. Thanks, Jaded. Thank you for tuning in again. Again, I will go. Uh, is there anything else I need to link down in the description that you guys would like? I will link my coffee account. I've already linked the Galaxy Customs website. Um, yeah, you are welcome, Kim. Best of luck. And if you have any questions, Laura, you are very welcome. This was lots and lots of fun. Oh, I just love that all you guys are here. This was this really made my afternoon and my week. All right. So yes, I am going to call it. Thank you again, everybody, for tuning in. I am hopeful to have the Astrid bag up Friday or Saturday. Um, it will be up by Saturday, the latest for sure. And then I'll be starting the Kensley right away. I think the only thing I have to do on a personal basis is go and buy some, do my uh, bi-weekly grocery shop on Friday morning and I have a doctor's appointment. So then I'll be home in the evening, probably doing the voiceover for that tutorial. Thank you, Carol. Thank you so much for tuning in. Again, if you guys haven't already, please make sure you subscribe. I have a goal of 7,500 subscribers by my birthday on May 1st. Erica, thank you for all the info. I love your live chats. Thank you for tuning in, Erica. I'll see you on the next one. All right. I am going to call it because I could just keep talking and talking and talking. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Um, what is your easiest make and the most difficult make? Uh, I think I just answered that one, Marsha. Um, my most difficult was the Clover and my easiest was the Hobo by So Sweetness. Anyways, any more questions, be, you can definitely shoot me an email. That would be great. I will put that down in the description below as soon as we are out of here. You guys all have a great evening and I'll catch you on the next one. Love ya. Bye. <laughs>